What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about a very serious case in China. Just over two weeks ago, one of the worst child abuse scandals in recent history broke in China. The story centers around Red Yellow Blue Kindergarten in Beijing's Chaoyang District, where more than a dozen parents have filed reports with the police claiming that their children have been sexually abused at school. Parents allege that their children have been found with needle marks, forced to eat pills in which their teachers said would help them sleep better, and subjected to naked health exams at the school. A lot of rumors have been floating around the Chinese internet with people not really knowing what to believe anymore. One thing to note before moving on is the difference between kindergarten in the US and in China. In the US, you mainly have five-year-old students, whereas in China, kindergarten acts as a preschool and kindergarten, with children as young as three years old. While this has no bearing on the heinousness of the allegations, it is important to make the distinction in regards to how children can comprehend and report abuse to their parents. Also, instead of diving into what rumors could be true or to what extent they're true, I'll just be going over the facts of the case, how it's being handled, and then raising a few rumors or suspicions from locals in Shanghai. Almost immediately after the story broke, celebrities and internet users alike took to social media to demand an in-depth investigation of what happened. And that's where this story took a different turn. Videos of parents being interviewed and protesting outside of the school, along with articles and any posts with hashtags relating to this event, began to be heavily censored on Chinese social media and the internet. Thus began the widespread skepticism and suspicion of a government cover-up in this case, especially since three people were arrested, two for spreading fake news and one for spreading rumors, without any arrests of the teachers or staff of the kindergarten. To counter skepticism on the internet, the Beijing police released a few notices on the case. In them, they detailed that three teachers had been suspended, and a female teacher, surnamed Lu, had been in fact arrested for injecting the kids with some type of substance when they did not listen to her to fall asleep during nap time. This is the only abuse that has been confirmed by the police, but is it the only abuse? As for the questionable naked health exams, the notice went on to say that teachers and students were never allowed to spend time one-on-one -on -one together. Obviously, this does not calm any parents' concerns over their child being abused, as a pedophile or abuser would not listen to laws in China, never mind some kindergarten rule. This is also a very convenient thing to say when none of these surveillance cameras had any footage on them, but more on this in a bit. Body inspections were given to children claiming to be abused, but doctors reported finding nothing unusual. This, again, doesn't really do anything to settle matters since a lot of sexual abuse is undetectable after it occurs, especially if it's a few days or weeks and the abuse has been going on for a long time. After the few arrests of people posting information on the internet and only one arrest of one teacher at the kindergarten, the case has had no major developments. So what are people in Shanghai saying? Before moving on, I would like to say that some of these things cannot be proved. However, the one thing is true that people are not satisfied with how this case is being handled and there is widespread suspicion of the government interfering. The person arrested for spreading rumors on the internet, also surnamed Lu, connected the kindergarten to an army training facility. People are speculating that the government wants to cover this case up to protect army personnel and party members. They went on to say that a few children reported having to watch a classmate be molested in front of them to learn what was normal during health checkups and behavior in the kindergarten. Finally, and perhaps the most disturbing of all, is how some parents found out about the abuse. A parent claimed that their child had woken up in the hospital after not remembering anything and had sustained serious injuries from sexual abuse. It is clear the Chinese government does not want people talking about this case. Widespread censorship and arrests of people posting information online has taken place. The police claim that there is no footage from the surveillance cameras due to a maintenance worker shutting down certain equipment systems because they were too loud, therefore causing a power outage. What little footage they did recover showed no abuse in the kindergarten. What abuse and to what extent it occurred to these children might never be known. But one thing is for sure, people are extremely outraged and suspicious of the government. Furthermore, they are not satisfied with the justice that has been given to the families and these young children. And that's who loses the most here. The children. The victims. The three to five year olds. The kindergartners 
who simply wanted to show up for another day of learning, to see their friends, to be in a safe environment, only to confront a child's worst nightmare. I end this video with some artwork that has been created by people online to protest the government's handling of this case in China. One in particular shows a flower with the kindergarten's colors sprouting over the children. Much like sunshine to a flower, children need the light of truth to flourish. But it doesn't look like they'll get this with the smog of lies hanging over Beijing.